book of First Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 29, the chapter that closes the door on First Chronicles, verses 10 through 13. Very familiar passage of scripture I want to revisit. And it reads, beginning at the 10th verse, Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord, God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all, Amen. both riches and honor come from thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is power and might, Amen. and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee, and we praise thy glorious name. Thank you, thank you so much. I want to, I want to, to be clear, crisp, and concise, I want to talk just a few moments about David's praise to God. David acknowledged God's greatness. And in acknowledging God's greatness, he also acknowledges God's sovereignty. The Life Application Bible gives a powerful statement in its footnotes concerning this passage of scripture. It says in the Life Application Bible that our constantly changing world is controlled by a constant and unchanging God. That was a powerful statement to me because we are living in a constantly changing world. But I'm glad to be able to stand today to say I celebrate Jesus. I celebrate the power of God in his might because he's constant and he's an unchanging unchanging God and when you look at that in his sovereignty when you look at it as it relates to his supreme power, the sovereignty of God is a truth that brings comfort and peace to many hearts. But it also brings stability to the child of God. When you talk about the sovereignty of God, the 
power of God, his supreme power. It is the doctrine that is key to history itself. The power of God. The sovereignty of God. When you really look at it, it is the interpreter of divine providence. The power of God, the sovereignty of God is the foundation of Christian theology. And what do we really mean when we lift this awesome word of sovereignty? When we look at the sovereignty of God and we pick into it as it was a pecan trying to find the good in it. How do we, how do we dig into the sovereignty of God? And when I thought about it, I, I looked into it and the best way to describe the sovereignty of God in his awesome power is pick it through the text itself. Let the scriptures speak about the power of God. As we look into his infinite wisdom through our finite mentality, God talks to us. And to say that God is sovereign First of all is to actually say that I come to understand that God is God. I don't have to compare him to anybody, anybody or anything else because the scripture defines the sovereignty of God that God is God from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 35. When I read it to you unto thee, it was shown that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God. And then it closes by saying, there is none else beside him. That's a good way to define the sovereignty of God, that he's God all by himself. There's no comparison when it comes to trying to define who God is. But how do you really, really look at the sovereignty of God through the scripture to say that God is sovereign is to declare that God is, according to Psalms 115 and 3, God is in the heavens. Help me, Jesus. And he has done whatsoever he pleased. Let me just bring it down, put it in brown paper sack so you can take it home for a snack. God does what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, how he want to do it, to who he want to do it to. And you ain't got nothing to say about what he do. Why? Because he's sovereign. So when you talk about the sovereignty of God, how do you explain it? Psalms 22 and 8. In 28 says, Psalms 22 and 28 says, it declares that for the kingdom is the Lord's. And he is the governor among nations. What he's saying to us is, he got the whole world. In his hand. 
God analyzes the world, the kingdoms. And while these other officials think that they call in the shots, God is ruling. And God is super ruling. Because he's what? Sovereign. When the scripture talks about the sovereignty of God, turn to 1 Timothy 6 and 15. There's a word in here that I'm scared of, but I'm going to try to attack it, but I'm going to keep rolling. 1 Timothy 6 and 15 says, Jesus is blessed and the only potentate. The king of kings and the lords of lords. So I had to grab me a dictionary because I had to look up this big word potentate. And come to find out what he was saying is potentate is the person who possesses great power. So that means that God is sovereign. He stands alone within himself. He don't need nobody else. You can come on and talk with me. So then when you look at it, you look at the conclusion of this matter, of this prayer in 1 Chronicles 29, 10 through 13 is intended to imply on our part, the reason for our assurance that God will grant our petition. In other words, when you put it, when you put it where you can really get it, all the text is saying through his sovereignty, he's able. Now, if you don't know when to shout, that was a good shouting spot to look at and talk about, to realize, to believe that God is able. I believe I'll reverse it and ask the question, don't you know he able? What does it do? What does, what does the text ascribes to us? It ascribes to God the possessions of everything in heaven and on earth. Because the Bible says, and I let me go, the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world. Not only the world, but they that dwells therein. Let me tell you something. You need to cut this stuff out and come out of mind. You know, you, you, know, you need to leave my stuff alone. I'm talking about, you better not get on my property. He cut that out. You ain't no landlord. You ain't nothing but a tenant. Because you can check out of here in a moment. You ain't going to take nothing with you. And if you could come back and check out who ruling your stuff after you gone, you'll be disappointed. Because there's a fella roaming around in the dark named Jody. He don't play. And the idea of it is, my brothers and sisters, you better keep it real. 
Keeping it real is the fact of realizing who's in charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanking God every day for what he's allowed you to use. Thanking God every day that he's given you the activities of your limb. So it ascribes to us that God is in charge. You hear me? And it tells us here, it tells us here that his is the king. And he's exalted as head over everything. You understand that? He's exalted as the head over everything. No, you didn't understand it. Let me change it and put it where you can get it. He's exalted as the head over everything. <laughs> the idea of it is when you look at it, it tells us right here in the text that wealth, that little change you got in your pocket, that little paper you got tucked away in your security account? Who gave it to you? Don't you get carried away. Just because you live in a dime above a biscuit. Don't get beside yourself. Just because you want folks to call you Mrs. and Mr. Uh -huh. Wealth and honor, listen, comes from God. You know why? Because he's the ruler. And he's the ruler over what? Not just something. He's the ruler over everything. Come on, you better write it down. Uh -huh. All that stuff you got tucked away in your closet, pushed back, taking all them pills and jogging all of them down the road. On, Trying to get back in it. Let it go. Because I'm going to lose all this weight. And then I'm going to spend about another 50 or 60,000 for Tommy Tucker. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking. The idea of it is you need to understand got to put it in his hand. Because the Bible says, read it for yourself. This word says right here what I've read to you this morning. His hand are the strength. His hand Is the power. Because his hand has the ability to exalt and to give you where you are because God exalted you to where you are. You living like you living because God's hand 
in his generosity has allowed you to live the way you live. Ride the way you ride. Eat the way you eat. Dress the way you dress. Strut the way you strut. But don't get carried away because the word of God says it comes from his hand. So the prayer, listen, listen, I'm going to leave you alone. The prayer puts all power in the right perspective. At the very outset, listen, go to verse 11. Bible puts everything in perspective. Listen what it says. He says, thine, O Lord, is the greatness. It places the emphasis on divine personality. Thine Oh, Lord. As much as to say what he's saying is, it is thou, oh, Lord, who art the great and not I. That's why we have to humble ourselves and we have to say to the master, Lord, thank you. Please don't forget to say thank you. When you sit down to eat, don't forget to say thank you. When you clothe yourself, please don't forget to say thank you. When you get in your car and you crank it and you leaning and stalling, don't forget to say thank you. When you hit that time clock, don't go in griping. Tell him thank you. And when you pick up that paycheck, don't be clowning about how much time you put in and the numbers ain't right and ain't enough zeros in it. Just tell him thank you. Because there's somebody that wish they was where you are. Listen to what I'm saying, if you will. He says, for the greatness belong to God. I got, I got to go. This is too good to be true. For the Bible says, for all that is in heaven and in earth is thine. I'm going to read it to you. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord. Thou art exalted as head above all. Yeah, I'm reading. Yes, Lord, both riches and honor. It comes from thee because thou reignest over all. In thine hand is power and might. And in thine hand is to make great and to give strength unto all. Your strongest moment, you weak enough to fall. Did you hear what I just said? 
Then he closes with the 13th verse. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. You finna close. Hallelujah. In the 13th verse, look what he said. Now, therefore, our God, Lord, we thank you. Can, can you thank him right now? Can, can you thank him right now? And then look what he says. Not only do I thank thee, but I praise thee. Can you praise him? And why do you praise him? Because of his glorious name. Let me share, let me share this with you, please. Let me share this with you, please. Where there is no belief in God's power, he works no miracle. I said you didn't hear what I said. Where there is no belief in God's power, he works no miracle. Because God works miracles through his wonder working. His wonder working power. I got ready to go out of the office. I stepped in the back room, got on the computer because the Lord said, I ain't finished yet. He said, turn to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, 21. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly above all that we can ask or think. Have the Lord done anything for you that you didn't ask for? You just thought about it and the Lord gave it to you because it was already in his hands. I'm here today to tell you, he said, by the power that worketh in us because if you let him in, he'll give you the power to be able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we can ask and all that we can think. Let me tell you what the Lord will do for you. He'll make you climb slippery mountain. For I heard the songwriter say, do you have any mountain? that seem like they're too hard to climb. He'll let you crawl through some river. He'll let you travel through some rivers. And let me tell you how he does it. It's because he specializes. Y'all ain't heard a word I said. I said because he specializes. Some of y'all still sitting there. You wouldn't be where you are if the Lord hadn't brought you through dangers seen and unseen. I'm going to tell you one more time because God specializes. Somebody said what he specializes in things impossible. Yes, and he can do. You ain't heard me. Have he done anything for you? I said he can do. I said, have you ever been in any trouble? He can do. 
Have you ever been in a place where you didn't feel so good? But you're feeling all right right now? It's because he can do it. 